Hi everyone, my name is Fanny and today I'm going to be talking about ES6 generators and how they can help us write asynchronous code. So what are generators? A generator is a special function that you can pause and resume at many points. Because we can pause and resume a generator, we can use those qualities to our advantage and perform async functions inside existing flow control structures such as loops, conditionals, and try-catch blocks. Let's see what that looks like. So, as you can see, you'll notice that a generator function looks just like a regular function, except it's declared with a function asterisk keyword. You'll also notice the yield keyword. This keyword lets a generator function know where to pause. Now, how does it work? When a generator function is invoked, it will actually return an iterator object. Before we can run it, we need to assign the invoked generator to a variable. Let's call it iterator. Now, when we run the generator function by calling iterator.next, which is a method that all iterators have, it will run like normal until it reaches the first yield keyword. Now, this is where things get interesting. At this point, the function pauses. The, the dot next method returns an object with two properties, a value and done. The value property is whatever is being yielded at that paused moment, and the done property is a Boolean that lets us know whether the last yield statement has been returned from the generator. The function stays paused and waits until the next iterator dot next call at which point the function will resume and continue running its code. So on this first call, we get a value of 1 and done is false. That makes sense, since there are more yield statements to go. On the second call, we get a value of 2 and done is also false, because we have another yield statement. On this third call, the value is 3 and done is false. And if we call iterator.next a fourth time, we get the object value is undefined and done is true. This makes sense. This means there is nothing to yield and the last yield statement has been returned from the generator. Once that happens, the generator will return undefined no matter how many times we call iterator.next. Now, did you notice how each iterator.next call we were logging undefined to the console. That's because we weren't passing any values into the dot next method. The iterator dot next method can also accept an argument and inject that value replacing the yield statement. Now the value gets passed to the generator where it gets returned. In this example, the yield statements were yielded out but nothing was passed back into the generator function. It didn't have anything to work with. So let's see what we get when we run this function again, but with strings passed into iterator.next. So the output looks similar to the previous example, and now we're logging out our strings. But wait, what happened to the argument that was passed to the first iterator.next call? Where is the string first? Also, why does it take four calls to iterator.next before done equals true. This is because the first call to iterator.next doesn't log anything yet because the generator function had just started running. It hadn't reached a yield statement yet, so the first argument doesn't get passed in. All subsequent .next calls will resume the generator function and the arguments will get passed to the generator for each yield. And we can see that from the console.log statements. Now, you might be thinking, okay, but how does this help me write asynchronous functions? So, what happens when the yielded value is a promise? That's when generators get really useful. The generator function will pause and wait for that promise to resolve, and when the promise is resolved, the response will get passed back to the generator function. That means we can use generators to make asynchronous calls such as to the server or database. Now, there are a lot of generator libraries out there, 
such as Co and Bluebird and Tracer that you can use to wrap your generator functions so that you don't have to keep calling .next or worry about flow control. Now, let's take a look at an example that you might find useful for your projects today. So in this example, we're using SQLize to create some new instances for our database. While this example looks pretty simple, I'm sure you've all had to write some pretty hairy SQLize queries. In the promises only make hobbies example, we're using a promise.all to resolve the three instance creations, user just day and hobbies craft and singing, crafting and singing. Next, we're, chan we're chaining another promise.all to call, to call the add hobby instance method to add crafting and singing as hobbies to our user just day. So this could look worse, but uh, let's see how we can refactor this code using a generator function. Here, uh, our generator function, make hobs, will yield the promise of each instance creation, just day, crafting, and singing. When each promise resolves, the, the response gets passed back to the generator and injected into the declared constant for each new instance. Now our generator function uh, calls the add hobby instance method on our user and yields the hobby instances that we want to add to our user just day. Finally, the whole generator function is wrapped into wrapped in a code function which we get from the code generator library, which handles the flow control for us. No dot next calls needed. Ultimately, the generator function is shorter, cleaner, easier to, un to read, and even looks synchronous. So if you're interested in learning more, here are some great videos and articles to check out. And here are the docs and tools that I used as resources. Thank you.